I am the newly hired ecophysiologist. I study bat flight and echolocation, their behavior as they hunt insects, and I oversee this wonderful collection that we have here that was assembled uh, by Dr. Pigich and her late husband, John Pigich, here. The museum is named after. And it's really a tremendous resource that we have here. I use it for teaching mammalogy. Uh, we have a class in here today, and so we get to learn all about these critters. Um, everything from their skulls and their skeletons to their behavior and how they've evolved. And so what I wanted to kind of illustrate with some of the resources that we have here is some of the evolution of mammals. And as kind of vertebrate biologists, we're often interested in how animals have evolved to adapt to different kinds of environments. And mammals are really cool because we can look at their skeletons, their skulls, and compare and contrast them to see how the basic mammalian body plan has evolved for so many different evolutionary and ecological niches, from whales to bats to moles and moles and all sorts of cool critters that are really pretty different from each other as far as how they live, but that they're all fairly closely related to each other, so it's pretty fascinating from that perspective. Um, so I'll do a beginning of, a, of a intro here and then let Helen uh, take over have a thesis committee meeting at 1230 that I have to run over to. But Helen is more than qualified. She's been here for a long time and can tell you incredible stories about virtually every specimen that are in here, how they got here, uh, the names of them, Sally the Buffalo, etc., etc. <laughs> um, but I thought I would start by just broadly setting the stage for mammalian evolution by talking about this here. So this is a replica of a fossil, and anybody have any guesses as to what this is? Wild guesses are fine. Whatever first comes to mind, anything. Don't be shy. You won't be <laughs> counted off for negative answers. What does it remind you? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, it does kind of look like a dinosaur, but the interesting thing is that it's actually not a dinosaur. So in the early evolution of, of animals, at some point, uh, there was kind of a salamander-like animal, and they started laying eggs that have a shell on them that's called the ambience. And so at some point, that, that was the ancestor to pretty much all the vertebrate animals, and the reptile group, which includes all the reptiles and turtles, as well as birds, and, and dinosaurs were kind of their own lineage uh, called the diapsids, and then the separate lineage led to mammals. Land mammals are the only living group of which this is one of the ancestors called Demetrodon. And so um, there's, I don't know if you can see this picture here, maybe you've seen pictures of it, it has this giant sail-like structure on its back. It's still kind of debated what it was for, um, but one of the differences that you can see, if you look at any skull, dinosaur skulls, these openings here on the side, um, the diapsid, the name, that name means two holes. And so this one, it just has one hole here. So if we had a uh, T-Rex skull to compare it with, there would be a second hole up on the top that you would know it's in a reptile so looking at any skull, you can tell which lineage it's from. But it's pretty amazing that this kind of ancestor led to us, led to all the different mammals that we can see in this room. And um, at some point, with the early mammals, it was thought that they were kind of a shrew-like animal. Does anybody know what a shrew is? It's a shrew. They look like it's okay. Most people don't actually know what a shrew is. Any, any, what image the, comes to mind? Marmots too big. Shrews are uh, little animals. Some people think they kind of look like mice. Um, they're small, furry little critters that scurry around through the brush on the ground. And they're kind of like hummingbirds in that they're really small and they have a really high metabolism. If they don't eat in a few hours, they'll die. Sometimes you just, uh, if you're out, like naturalists, just find a dead shrew sitting there. 
just couldn't find food. And it's thought that for about 100 million years, uh, that the shrews were, or a shrew-like animal, were the ancestors of all mammals. And they lived at the same time as dinosaurs. There were very few of them. They're pretty rare in the fossil record. So they're just pretty much lurking in the darkness, trying to get avoid eaten by dinosaurs and other critters while all the dinosaurs are having their glory in the day and, and doing their thing. Then eventually the dinosaurs went extinct and the mammals pretty much took over. There was a change in the climate and they started diversifying into the many forms that we see here. So as sort of evolutionary biologists, comparative biologists, we're really interested in looking at different, different forms of animals. And I will let Helen take over and, and Maggie potentially um, and talk about some of those adaptations. But some things we're really interested in are the skeletons, looking at the different foot postures, as well as the teeth in mammals. So I'm going to let Helen take over from there. Your that. Excellent. All right. Well, I wish I could stay longer, um, but I really am glad that you all could come to see the museum. You're welcome anytime. Thank you so much. because 
because of Dr. Corcoran's specialty, which is what? Bats. Is the bat skeleton. And bats are called chiropterids. Chiro means fingers. And the tarot part means wings. And so, just as he showed earlier this morning, if I were a bat, my forelimbs would be dedicated to flying. And standing like this, my fingertips would touch the ground if I were a bat. And if we take a look at the skeleton, and we can pass that around, those very long skinny bones are fingers. Skull. 
ideas? What could this thing be? Yeah, it's a beaver. And if you look at the teeth, the cheek teeth, the ones at the side of the jaw, what shape are they? Are they nice and pointy? These back teeth? Overall, what's the pattern? They're flat. And what good are flat teeth? Grinding. And what do beavers eat? First of all, they jump down trees. And then they take the twigs and hold them in their teeth and their front paws and swim to the bottom of the pond where they stash all those twigs um, to be their food supply over the winter. And then basically they eat twigs, which is what? Wood. Okay. So they'll peel the bark off, but they do a lot of grinding. That's the way they get their nutrition. And if you want to grind stuff, you don't have sharp pointy teeth, do you? Nope, you have flat uh, grinding teeth. So that's our, our beaver. And notice how the, the teeth are specialized in the front, the choppers that are cut down.